Hey everybody, Alan Barnowski here with a lesson for Acoustic Guitar Magazine. And today we are looking at the flat picking styles of Doc Watson. Um, we're going to start with his rhythm approach, then look at his lead playing, and then look at the way that he combined these together. Um, there's going to be a lot here. There's a lot of examples. And uh, I recommend, if you don't have it already, to find the write-up from Acoustic Guitar Magazine, either in the physical magazine, or you can just find it at AcousticGuitar.com for free, and that'll lead you through all the tabs for all of these examples. Um, so that's, the, that's the kind of the best way to go through this video. Um, and with that being said, let's just kind of jump right in. Let's start to look at Doc Watson's rhythm approach in his playing. Um, before looking at any particular songs, I think it would be helpful just to look at some uh, strumming patterns that he would use, different right hand patterns. Um, these are in examples 1A through 1D, if you're looking at the tab. And we're going to do all of these over your you know, standard C chord. So just your kind of standard C. And uh, the basis for all of these is going to be the first pattern. It's your standard boom chuck. It sounds like this. Um, so what's going on here is I'm holding a C chord and bouncing my third finger back and forth over the fifth string and the sixth string. Um, so I, fifth string, sixth string, like that. In between those, there's a chord strum. And that's kind of the basis of the boom chuck, but there's a few things that are really kind of important to consider. The first one is that you want those bass notes to be strong. You want those to be front and center, you want the strums to be on time and crisp and clean, but a little bit volume-wise tucked back in the mix, so to speak. So you get this kind of sound. That's gonna help give you the drive and the power that Doc got from his um, rhythm playing. Another thing to think about is um, even though the third hand, or, I'm sorry, the third finger is bumping back and forth, um, the other two fingers are staying put. And that'll help give you like a sense of continuity and sustain over that chord. Last thing is that you want to, when you do the strums, you kind of want to target the top strings, like the, roughly the top three strings. When you do that strum. But if you don't hit all three, if you maybe hit another string, as long as you're holding that full chord shape, you're gonna be fine, okay? So don't worry about hitting those top three strings exactly. That's just kind of the target. Um, yeah, so that's the first one. All the others, the other three patterns we're gonna look at are built off that boom chuck. This is the second one, it goes like this. Okay, um, what's going on here is we're adding an up strum after the down strum. So that's uh, example 1B. The third one is going to be a little bit different. Sounds like this. What's going on here is there is an upstroke um, on the fourth string after you hit the bass note. So you first hit that bass note, then you do an upstroke on the fourth string, and then do a strum. All right, then you go to your alternate bass, upstroke on the fourth string, and then a strum. This one's probably a lot more difficult. If you've never done these before, it's probably a lot more difficult than the last one. So, you know, give it some time, let it sink in, let your fingers get used to it. The last one is gonna combine all of these together. So it's a continuous down and up pattern that sounds like this. So what you've got is first the downstroke uh, on the bass note, then the upstroke on the fourth string, then your down strum, up strum, and same thing with the alternate. Okay, and that's all four of the patterns. Um, Doc, of course, did a lot of other things in his rhythm playing and his strums and stuff, but these are consistent. If you listen to any of Doc's recordings over the years, you're going to hear these come up, um, and they're all over the place. So if if you want to get this kind of Doc Watson rhythm style, this is the place to start getting used to those strumming patterns. Now let's kind of see it in action. 
let's listen to, um, or I'm sorry, let's look at example two. This is Doc's uh, rhythm playing on Blue Ridge Mountain Blues. He recorded this many times. This is the one from his recording uh, from a live concert with Gene Ritchie in the early 60s. Um, he played this under the first verse, um, but you know, throughout the rest of the song, it's, it's all quite similar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and through and play this. We're in the key of G. So the chords are gonna be different than we looked at in those examples when we're going over the C chord. Um, but just bear with me, I'll talk through it after I play it. Here we go, example two. Okay, so there you go. Um, hopefully you could see some of that boom chuck happening, um, but let, I'll kind of walk through it. First measure and a half um, is the boom chuck over a G chord this time. So we first hit that uh, bass note on the sixth string and do a strum. Then we have our note on the fifth string, do a strum, back to the bass note. And then there's a little walk up. And that gets us to this D7 chord where we do uh, the second strumming pattern where there's an up strum. Okay, so that kind of continues on through the next few measures. And then a bass walk back to the G. And what happens after this, there is more movement in the left hand, but in the right hand, we're still kind of sticking to this boom chuck approach. Check it out. right hand, you're still doing boom, chuck, or in sometimes the boom, strum, strum. Okay, so that's what's going on in Doc's rhythm playing. Um, take a listen to this recording. Take a listen to a lot of different Doc recordings. You're going to hear this all over the place. The last thing I want to mention about Doc's rhythm playing is he sometimes used extended bass runs. So he used these short little bass runs like we saw in Blue Ridge Mountain Blues. He used those all the time, like uh, walking into one chord from another. He would also use these like very uh, lengthy bass runs that are just awesome. A great example is from his duet with Bill Monroe on the tune Feast Here Tonight. This is example three. Um, you can hear this on the live duets with Doc Watson and Bill Monroe. Great record. Um, definitely check that out. But anyway, this is on the tune Feast Here Tonight out of the key of D. I'll play through it and then just have a few little thoughts about it. Here we go. Two, three, four. Okay, so there it is. Um, what I love about this is it's powerful and you just get a, it's driving. Um, Doc does this under Bill Monroe's mandolin solo and you just get the, this really cool contrast between um, the guitar bass line and the you know single note mandolin solo that Bill Monroe's doing. Really cool effect. Um, these are all downstrokes for the most part. And the way it works is that Doc's following the chord changes. He's not just kind of like running through um, random notes, <laughs> you know, or like running up and down a scale. He's really following the chord changes. So as a listener, you still know what's going on musically. Um, but there's, it's just a very different effect than doing that boom check. So there we go. We talked about rhythm patterns. We gave an example of Doc's uh, use of those rhythm patterns. And then we talked about some of Doc's extended bass lines that he would do. And now I think it's time to shift in to lead playing. We can start to look at, um, yeah, Doc's kind of flat picking lead stuff. This is, for the next one we're going to be looking at is uh, June Apple. The tune June Apple is out of the key of A. So we're gonna use capo on the second fret and play it out of the G shape. That puts us in the key of A. June Apple is a really common jam tune. So um, if you you know learn this tune and bring it to your local jam, I bet most people there are gonna know, know this tune. Um, I'll just play through it. You can get a sense of how it goes and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Thank you. 
Okay, so there it is. That's June Apple. Um, I guess that was pretty quick. <laughs> so hopefully you can use the slow down function in YouTube if you want to slow that down a bit. Um, but yeah, anyway, the main crux of this or the main point that I want to share is alternating picking. So um, what this means is that you are uh, going to be doing downstrokes on down beats, um, upstrokes uh, on the upbeats, so to speak. So if you're counting your measure one and two and three and four and, that's going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Um, that's how Doc played. And that's how Doc gets this driving sound. He, you know, cut his teeth in the 50s playing an electric guitar in a Western swing band and a country band doing square dances. And he would play fiddle tunes on an electric guitar. And my guess is the way that he was able to mimic the fiddle is by doing this alternating pattern. Um, you, if this is new to you, and maybe it is, you can go to the tab. All the pick directions are marked in the tab. So hopefully that'll help you out as you're, as you're going about learning this. One little note about fingering is that uh, in the A part, there's this passage here. That shows up in measures uh, five and six, I think is what they are. Yeah. Um, and to do that, I would recommend thinking like you're playing an F chord. So do this little bar with the first finger um, at the first fret. That's just really gonna help compared to having to like bounce your finger back and forth. Um, so I'm just kind of anticipating that might be an issue some folks might have. Um, but yeah, have fun with this one. It's a great song. And like I said, this is one to learn so you can bring to the jam and play it with some other folks. Um, the other thing I want to talk about with, uh, with Doc's lead playing is licks. So as I mentioned before, I think I mentioned this before, Doc very often would play out of the C shape. That's why when we were doing those, uh, kind of boom chuck strumming patterns, we were look, we were doing that over C. Um, and a lot of the licks Doc played, inevitably he played them out of the key of C. So these licks just, C licks sound like Doc. So if you want to get that doc sound, it's good to learn a handful of these C licks that he would use when he was playing solos and that kind of thing. Um, so I've got a bunch of them here, and I'm just going to kind of run through them. The first one's really basic. Well, not basic. It's uh, straightforward, I should say. Straightforward sounding. That's it. What makes this like a signature doc lick is that he is using this E flat to an E. That and when you do that over the over the C chord, you just get this kind of classic doc sound. Uh, here we go, last one. All right, so that's that first lick. Just happens on the top two strings, um, kind of short and sweet, but the, a, a lot of character in there. Here's the second one. All right, so that's another one. Same kind of flavor, just a, a little bit different. Takes up a little bit more space. All right, we'll do that slow. And I do want to say all of these licks are taken directly out of Doc recordings. Um, so if you listen to recordings of Doc, you, you'll probably hear things um, that are just like these licks because that's where they came from. Um, here's another one. This one's a little bit different. You'll see what I mean in a second. What makes this one different is it's triplets and it's swung. Uh, if you don't know what any of that means, don't worry about it. Just copy the rhythms and you'll get the gist of it. Do that a little bit slower here. Okay, so that's the third lick. That's example 5C. So now we're going to move on. All of those were kind of on the upper strings. Now we're going to look at some that take place kind of in the middle and lower on the strings. Short and sweet. It's kind of like your C chord, like you're rolling through the notes of a C chord, but you're going to add in that E flat. Remember I mentioned that before? Okay, so that's example 6A. Here's 6B.
again, C lick, it starts with this kind of chromatic line. And then um, I like to add a little bit of a pause or a rest right before that last note. The way I do that is by using my left hand to dampen the strings. Um, and there you go. Here's uh, another lick. I guess this is going to be like the last lick that we're going to be looking at, example seven. Um, if you've ever heard Doc's recordings, this is going to be very recognizable to you. Here we go. That's it. Doc would usually do that at like breakneck speed. All right. Um, and it's this kind of like chromatic-ish type of run up all the strings. So that's example seven. And then last of all, I'm including example eight. This is part of Doc's solo on the song Ramshackle Shack. This is, it comes from the record Riding That Midnight Train. Um, anyway, I just wanted to show this because it gives a little bit of context about how Doc might use this type of language in a solo. And this is how it goes. All right, give that, give that one a go again here. Okay, so there it is. That's all those C licks that I was talking about. I hope you have fun with those. I hope you learn a little bit of something with it. Um, last of all is uh, Doc's combination of rhythm and lead. Um, there are two tunes I want to showcase. First one is what you heard in the intro, Tennessee Stud. The second one is the tune Little Sadie. So Tennessee Stud is capo at the fifth fret, and we're actually going to be playing out of A shape. So this puts us in the key of D, but of course I'm going to talk like we're in A, uh, just because we're playing out of that A shape. And uh, yeah, here we go. I'll just I'll play through it again so you get it back in your ear. All right, so there you go. It starts off with this flat picking line. I guess the the uh, first full line of notation is all um, you can think of as lead. All right, so you can think about all that as kind of being lead, and then it transitions into rhythm. Okay, also one of the reasons I wanted to highlight this one is because it's using one of those same picking patterns, rhythm picking patterns we talked about very early on. This would be the third one where you we have the bass note, the up strum or the up stroke, and then um, the down strum. All right, so hopefully you can kind of see that working. So there you go. That's Little Sadie, or I'm sorry, no, that's uh, that's Tennessee Stud. And the next one's gonna be Little Sadie. So I'm gonna drop the capo. We're gonna play this open, and it's out of the key of D minor. Um, so that puts us down here. And um, yeah, this one really com uh, combines this uh, lead and rhythm kind of thing. I'll play through it and talk about it a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so this is a tough one. Really cool song, a tough one to play. Um, what's presented in the, in the tab is the intro and then what Doc plays under the first verse. Um, this song is really kind of like, you know, he sings a few verses, plays the, plays the guitar part, sings a few more, plays the guitar part. So you can take this information and, you know, turn it into a, the full song, really. Um, but what's going on is he kind of, Play in the first half. He is playing the melody line, and 
doing that while also throwing in these kind of backup chords. So you, you can see there's these ringing notes happening at the same time. Um, if you really want to do this right, what I would suggest is trying to identify what is melody, what is rhythm, and being able to play the melody alone and then adding in these kind of rhythm backups. That is really the way to master the style of playing. So it'd be tough to do, but that's that's kind of how that's kind of how you do it. Um, one last thing I think I want to mention about this is there in this uh, this is measure ten. Doc hits this low F note. So Doc doesn't play it like I do. I what he does is he wraps his thumb around. And that might be easier for a lot of you. It's just not something I do. So uh, when you saw me playing it, you didn't see me do that. Um, just something to note. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. That That's all we've got to talk about today. Thank you for sticking with me with this video. I hope you've learned something. Um, I hope this is something you can come back to and continue to you know watch and learn stuff from. I would love to hear if you have any questions or comments, drop it below or just shoot me an email. You can find my information and uh, would love to chat with you. Um, and yeah, good luck. Have fun with this. Take care.